afternoon. Today is Friday of the, 30, of the third week in ordinary time. Please rise as we welcome Christ and the person of our presiding priest, Father Munching de Guzman of the Society of Jesus. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, let us call to mind our sins, and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Recall the days gone by when you endured the great contest of suffering after you had been enlightened. At times, you were publicly ex exposed to insult and trial. At other times, you associated yourselves with those you were being so dealt with. You even joined the sufferings of those who were in prison and joyfully assented to confiscation of your goods, knowing that you have a better and per more permanent possessions. Do not, then, surrender your confidence. It will have a great reward. You need patience to do God's will and receive what He has promised. For just a brief moment, and who is, He is to come will come. He will not delay. My just man will live by faith. And if he draws back, I take no pleasure in him. We're not among those who draw back and perish, but among those who have faith and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response or also, let our response be, the salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and enjoy its security. Take delight in the Lord, and He will grant you your heart's request. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Commit to the Lord your way. Trust in Him, and He will act. He will make justice dawn for you like the light. Bright as a noonday shall be your vindication. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. 
by the Lord are the steps of a man made firm, and he approves his way. Though he fall, he does not lie prostrate, for the hand of the Lord sustains him. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. He is their refuge in time of distress. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them, because they take refuge in him. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Please all stand. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to the little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, This is how it is with the reign of God. A man scatters seed on the ground. He goes to bed and gets up day after day. Through it all the seed sprouts and grows without his knowing how it happens. The soil produces of itself first the blade, then the ear, finally the ripe wheat in the ear. When the crop is ready, he wills the sickle, for the time is ripe for harvest. He went on to say, What comparison shall we use for the reign of God? What image will help to present it? It is like mustard seed, which, when planted in the soil, is the smallest of all the earth's seeds. Yet once it is sown, springs up to become the largest of shrubs, with branches big enough for the birds of the sky to build nests in its shade. By means of many such parables, he taught them the message in a way they could understand. To them he spoke only by way of parable, while he kept explaining things privately to his disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. A mustard seed is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when planted it grows and becomes the largest of all plants in the garden. Friends, do you believe that anything small you do each day can produce something big tomorrow? You know, one day a partially deaf boy came home from school with a note from his teacher. It suggested to his parents to take him out of school. He was, in, according to the note that the student brought home, too stupid to learn. When the boy's mother read this note, she said, My son Tom isn't too stupid to learn. I'll teach him myself. When Tom died many years later, the people of his nation paid tribute to him by turning off the lights for one minute, the nation's lights which Tom had invented. Tom, who was branded by his teacher as too stupid to learn, is Thomas Edison. He invented not only the light bulb, but also the motion picture we watch and the record player we listen to today. He has over 1,000 patents to his credit. See, do you believe that anything small you do each day can produce something big tomorrow? On December 17, 1903, two brothers, Orville and Wilbur Wright, from Dayton, Ohio, made history at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. 
They got the first primitive airplane to fly a short distance. That flight ushered in the birth of a new form of transportation. Orville leave until 1948, not long enough to see the form of transportation he pioneered grow to the point that it would put a man on the moon. Friends, do you believe that anything small you do each day can produce something big tomorrow? What these things of the past did was to show us the possibilities and the responsibility that we all had. It wasn't the answer. It just gave us the glimpse of the possibility, a seed for us to take care to grow. See, a mustard seed is the smallest, but once planted, it's the largest. See, the finger of God, my dear friend, scratched the soil and planted a seed in the heart of Francis of Assisi. And he took off his silk clothes and put on a beggar's rags to preach to the poor. Francis was the founder of men and women, Franciscan orders all over the world. The finger of God scratched the soil and planted a seed in Mother Teresa's heart. And she left the convent in Albania with $200 in her pocket to minister to outcasts in Calcutta, India. She was the founder of Missionaries of Charity, active in 133 countries. God is still planting seeds today. Whether the seed bears fruit or not depends on the heart into which it falls. Friends, do you believe that anything small you do today can produce something big tomorrow? Let's imagine a bit. Suppose someone from the year 4000 arrive on the planet Earth today in a time machine. By that time, we're all dead. 4,000 ahead of us comes to us right now in a time machine. And suppose this person carries a newspaper that contains no stories of violence, poverty, or wars between nations. Suppose the paper is carrying from 4,000 years future contains stories only of love, prosperity, forgiveness, peace, and friendship. What would you say to that? If you had any sense at all, you'd say such a world is impossible, unreal. Why? Because anybody with sense knows that where there are people, there will always be violence and hostility. Where there are people, there will be rich and poor. Where there are nations, there will be violence and war. If we approach life with the attitude that peace on earth is impossible, we probably fail to achieve it. If we approach life with the attitude that at heart people are uncaring and selfish, we'll probably fail to achieve a society that is caring and selfless. If we approach life with an attitude that nations are inherently violent and hostile, we'll probably fail to achieve world peace. Peace on earth is possible. Love among people is possible. Harmony among nations is possible. And the reason they are possible? Because Jesus already planted the seed of peace, of love, of forgiveness in our hearts. Remember, no small act of peace, no small act of love, no small act of forgiveness is too small that it cannot create a kingdom. For we have a God who will make small things big. We often become what we believe ourselves to be. If we keep on saying to ourselves that we cannot do certain things, it is possible that we may end up by really becoming incapable of doing it. On the contrary, if we have the belief that we can do it, we shall surely acquire the capacity to do it, even if we may not have it at the beginning. Who we are tomorrow, what our country and our world will be tomorrow, begins with what we decide to grow today. See, the parable of the mustard seed invites us to unlock our potential every day. We magnify God, not the impossibilities. See, the parable of the mustard seed challenges this. Will you or shouldn't you? Should you or shouldn't you? Won't you? 
Si Mother Teresa of Calcutta will say, small things done with great love will change the world. Yes, the great arises out of small things that are honored and cared for. So friends, do the small stuff. A consistent little will earn you a lot. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given in human hands of need, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please all stand. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please all kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Benaventura, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please all stand. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to our apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. Lamb of Lamb God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please all kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happier we are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in one another. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Good noon to all of you.